While it's interesting to know that when we react certain chemicals together, we can actually calculate with stoichiometry how much of a chemical is going to be produced in a certain reaction. Um, and, and by the way, in thermodynamics, uh, we actually talk about uh, why a reaction takes place and uh, if a reaction takes place at all. So those are really good things to know. But you know what else is important to know that chemistry is really concerned with? It's what is the rate of the reaction. Now why would you want to know necessarily about rates? Well listen, I mean it's pretty obvious that everything that we have industrially that's, that is produced, scientists want to know how fast or how slow a reaction is so they can manipulate certain things like concentration or temperature and be able to figure out how much product they can make in a certain given amount of time. So the Tylenol factory, you know, when they take X and Y and they're going to try to make Z, which is the Tylenol, they want to actually know uh, what are the factors that can be manipulated, like concentrations or temperatures, to be able to make a certain amount of Tylenol in a certain amount of time to be able to bottle that and sell it to you when you get a headache because you've had too much chemistry on the brain. Okay, so we want to study chemical kinetics. So, well, what are some factors though that, uh, that influence the rate of a reaction? The, the, well, we look at this. The first thing we're going to write down here is concentration. What is the change in the concentration of certain chemicals over a given amount of time? And everything here is measured over time, right? Because a rate is something over time. So concentration over time, that's a factor. We can change concentrations, and perhaps when we change the concentration of reactants, that might speed up a chemical process or slow it down. So that's something to study. That's a factor that can affect the rate of reaction. Temperature. Now, a general rule of thumb is, generally, that when you increase the temperature of chemical reactions by 10 degrees Celsius, you double the reaction rate. Just a general rule of thumb. So, temperature has an effect on the rate of reaction. Pressure would too, of course, just for gases, right? So if you increase the pressure, perhaps you are increasing the number of collisions per second that molecules experience, and hence you're able to produce more product in a quicker amount of time if you increase the pressure. Surface area. One of the most dangerous places to work, believe it or not, is factories that uh, are factories that make flour. Yeah, you know, like, 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 like white flour, the stuff that you bake cakes out of and stuff. Because when fine films of flour collect as dust on stuff, in, especially in those places, if you lit a match there, that can actually be a very highly combustible um, uh, environment and, and form of, of atomized type of material to be able to uh, go up in flames. So listen, here's the thing. They got to keep those places really clean because you can actually have huge explosions in flour factories. Yeah, by the dust that accumulates. Now, if you piled up all that flour into one big pile and tried to ignite it, not very much of a chance of that happening. But when you spread it out and kind of, we say atomize it, you actually increase the surface area and that can increase the rate of a reaction. So surface area does that. Light. You know, we actually store hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, in brown bottles because it's a very light sensitive chemical. When you expose it to light, it decomposes into water and oxygen gas far more readily just in the presence of light, yeah. So you could actually measure that. That might be a, a design lab for you in IV chemistry to actually measure the, the, the effect that light would have on the decomposition rate of H2O2. Then, activation energy and catalysts. Well, hey, molecules need a certain amount of activation energy to be able to then form products, you know, when they're colliding. So if you can actually lower the activation energy, uh, then more molecules are going to be successful in terms of their collisions to be able to produce product. And when you analyze something called a Maxwell-Boltzmann curve, you'll be able to see that as activation energy is decreased, more particles be, are able to then, in, in, in a closed system, are able to react to be able to produce product. Okay, so now, what are some things that you can do or techniques that you can employ to measure rates of reaction in a high school laboratory or university lab? Well, you can do a titration. If there's certain products that are formed uh, when two chemicals are mixed together, you could measure the rate by milliliters added versus time. So you could do a titration to be able to determine uh, a rate of reaction. You could collect a gas. 
Like, so maybe you've got a pressure uh, um, uh, probe that you can attach to uh, a reaction vessel, and then you could measure the increase or decrease in pressure uh, over time, and that would give you an idea as to the reaction rate for a specific reaction. Mass remaining, maybe, it's, maybe another cool idea for a design lab would be to know that if you mix certain chemicals together and a gas is evolved as a product, maybe you could actually mix those chemicals together on a scale and measure the mass difference over time because as the gas is produced and you keep the system open, maybe the gas escapes and there's going to be a mass change inside that container and that can help you to get a rate of reaction. Light absorption. Um, there, are, there are reactions where precipitates can form in solution over time. And, and some of the, I remember doing this one in university a long time, a long time ago, yeah, when my hair wasn't gray. And, and we, we mixed chemicals together and then put an X on a piece of paper and, and, and then we would put our reaction vessel on top of that. And then we would measure how long it took for the X that we would look at through the, 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 the reaction solution and down onto the paper for the X to disappear because a precipitate was forming and it would cloud over that X that was on the piece of paper outside the reaction vessel. Cool? And so it, we would actually alter the concentration of the chemicals and, 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 and find the rate of the obscuring of the X and then we were able to calculate a kind of a rate of reaction. Conductivity. So maybe the conductivity of a solution when you mix chemicals together will increase because it's making more ions or decrease because it's, it's actually forming chemicals that are, are precipitating out and, and there's a conductivity decrease in solution. Well, you could measure the conductivity change versus time or over time to be able to get a rate of reaction. And then there are these wonderful reactions that we do in, in chemistry where you can take uh, chemicals like uh, potassium bisulfite and uh, potassium iodate or sodium iodate, and you mix them together. And the cool thing is that uh, if you put a little bit of starch in that solution, what happens is when you just kind of mix it together and then you just leave it, what happens is over time, um, iodine starts to form after a series of reactions takes place, take place called elementary steps. Talk to you about that later. And once you get the final uh, end product, which is iodine, it reacts with the starch, turns the solution blue-black, and it happens instantaneously. And, and you can measure the rate of reaction based on the production of a certain colored chemical. In this case, iodine molecules which react with starch to make a blue color. And that's called a clock reaction because it takes a while for the reaction to happen. You're sitting there looking at it, it's colorless, 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 and you're bored and you look away and then you come back, it's changed. Those are pretty cool reactions.